come through. I, I don't normally like this kind of prosthesis, so I'd rather speak out, but uh, are our voices coming through? Yes. Well, I think it has the value it always had, plus uh, various new values. Uh, I think ultimately we have to accept that uh, though we watch television and uh, go to the cinema and buy video cassettes and so forth, uh, the book itself as an artifact is the uh, the most useful invention of all time. We can put a book in our pockets. We don't have to plug it into the wall. We can read it in bed. And uh, as uh, a compendium of uh, imagination, fact, and so forth, it is uh, superior to any other form we have. It's not dependent on extraneous elements like uh, electronics or electricity. Uh, in that sense, that's in the most elementary sense, that the novel has to survive because the novel is portable imagination. But I think in our own day, uh, the novel has been able to absorb uh, elements which have developed in uh, other narrative media. I, I think that uh, the great beauty of the novel has always been its capacity for absorption. I think we have to go back to uh, the most avant-garde novel of all time, which was written in the middle of the 18th century, that is Tristram Shandy by, uh, uh, by Lawrence Stern, where uh, the novel goes mad, the, the novel uh, presents itself as a, as a mock scholarly work. The, the typography goes mad. You have a blank page, a marble page. You have everything, in fact, that you're going to find in uh, Alistair Gray's new book, uh, 1982, Janine, which I gather is being celebrated here. Uh, this tradition, which was also in B.S. Johnson, the tradition of playing games, uh, is uh, just one aspect of the novel. The novel turned into drama with uh, Joyce's Ulysses, the, the central, the most important episode of, of Ulysses, is a kind of a big cinematic drama, uh, the uh, episode in, in Night Town, where Joyce is obviously being influenced by the cinema. Uh, I think the, the strength of the novel lies in its capacity to absorb uh, what's done in the other narrative media. And I think this is still ahead of us. People are always saying the novel is dead. But the novel is not dead. The novel has hardly begun to live. It's not a very uh, ancient form, as the name itself indicates. The novel is a novel thing. It's always been regarded as a vaguely upstart thing. It's comparatively recently only that uh, the novel's been accepted as an object for study in universities. Probably Henry James elevated the novel to uh, a degree of respectability. Before that, the novel was an upstart novel form. But the novel is still, in that sense, novel. It's still a new thing which we're able to build on. It's not dying. I think the only danger is that there, there may well be um, the prospective death of an audience, which is... Um, getting what Victorian readers used to get from uh, the part of familiars reading Dickens after dinner uh, from the television screen. But um, I always think that the, um, the Granada television adaptation of, of uh, Evelyn Ward's Bright's Head Revisited a couple of years ago uh, was a notable event in that it showed that uh, you could transfer a novel to the screen uh, without diminishing it and at the same time you could force the uh, viewer to be so intrigued by uh, the mind of the writer and the characters he created that he would want to go back to the novel. The television screen sends you back to the novel. It's not the other way around. Uh, so we have various adjuncts to the novel in our own time. I think television is, is the main one. And uh, I, I admit without shame that the, the work I'm engaged on at this moment is a work which ties in with television. Uh, in Tunisia, uh, a large uh, company, a large film company, has just completed uh, the filming of a 10-hour series for television called A.D., which I wrote. Uh, this is the third part of a trilogy, which uh, the, the first two parts of which have already been seen, I think, on your television sets. One was Moses, which I did for Lou Grade, Sir Lou Grade, as he was then, and the next one was uh, Jesus of Nazareth, directed by Zeffirelli, which was uh, for Lord Grade. The third part of the trilogy is not for anybody in particular, but it deals with um, with the early days of Christianity. It deals with, in other words, conflation, a conflation. It's a very literary thing, a conflation of the Acts of the Apostles and uh, the Lives of the Caesars by Suetonius and the History of Rome by, by, by Tacitus. Uh, I wrote the script. Uh, you'll see the film next year, we hope, or the end of this year. But at the same time, I felt that the writing of a novel uh, was essential. U using the uh, material that I'd already um, amassed, uh, the, the novel was an essential adjunct to the television uh, to the television series. It deepened the television. What you see uh, on the television screen, you can also feel in a novel. 
There's one thing that television can't do. It can't get inside characters. We can. We can give you the, uh, not only the internal monologue of the character, we can uh, give you the, his deeper, his subconscious thoughts. Uh, when James Joyce wrote Finnegan's Wake, he probed into the unconscious mind. Uh, this can't be done yet, I think, on the television screen. The novel is essential. The novel is an adjunct. Uh, well, the, 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 the television series, the, 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 the dramatic adaptation, uh, all these more popular forms are adjuncts to an existing important form uh, which is going to subsist. And I feel that uh, Brighthead Revinity showed us that. When I saw the series, I saw it all in a single day. I've been asked by um, a magazine run by uh, Exxon, who put uh, $200,000 into the Brighthead Revinity production to write an article on it. This entailed coming to London, seeing the whole of the film, uh, how many hours, 12 hours I think it was, in a single day, before the music had been added, incidentally, it was better then. <laughs> and uh, I was moved, deeply moved, as I was when reading the novel, but also I felt that the television series had done something the novel couldn't do. It had shown us what Brideshead looked like. Well, it was a Castle Howard, of course. It had shown us the characters. Uh, novels are not very good at showing us things, but what this series could not do was to show us what was going on inside the characters' minds. So the two, as it were, went together. I think television and the novel can work very happily hand in hand, but the novel finally wins. <laughs>